and uh, I think it's almost time now, so I can start. So I will talk about DevOps build and release and uh, the agentless build machine, how to make the basic setup, because uh, if you haven't done so yet, you can find a lot of uh, deep dives and, and uh, complex uh, introductions. Uh, but I would like to concentrate on how to do it when you first do it. So my name is Peter Prokopetz, and as Raz told, uh, I'm working with Vilmos Kintera, uh, who is an MVP. We are working on a, a big implementation. It's an upgrade. Uh, the company is called JJ Food Service. I'm a technical lead there. They are into food wholesale, and uh, they are using AX uh, from 2004 and uh, version 3.0. They have a huge database and uh, a lot of customizations. So it's a very complex project. And uh, we, we are working on data migration. Uh, we are after the code upgrade. We also tried out the data upgrade and the migration path. And uh, yes, we are coming close to go live. Other than that, I'm having my own company called DuxVision ERP. Uh, here at this company, I work with, AX, with an AX technical team, and we are supporting uh, customers and partners in every versions of AX. Also, I'm in, or we are involved in two other upgrade projects. And, uh, but the team is working with 3.0, 4.0, 2009, 2012, so every versions uh, we, we did and do uh, performance reviews and uh, debugging and customizations and a and lot of technical things. We, we do code upgrades and, and upgrades between versions, uh, R3 upgrade. So we are doing a lot of things. So that's the company website and my email address. Uh, my studies are IT engineering. Uh, my first diploma was in 2006 in IT engineering, and recently I completed my MBA. So now I'm also into economics and uh, management. And uh, I started working with AX from 2003. Uh, other than uh, my job, that's my hobby. I have other hobbies also. I do many sports. Uh, I'm not professional any of them, in any of them, but uh, I like all of them. So I do running. For example, I completed marathon in less than four hours and half marathon in close to one and a half hour. Uh, I play football. I did Thai boxing, but uh, recently it seems I'm getting old because I'm always injured. So now I, I stopped Thai boxing. But I do uh, CrossFit, and uh, I'm very interested in stocks and passive uh, investment, mainly ETF. I like traveling. I lived in Dubai before, and Cambridge, and in Belgium, in Ghent, uh, and had projects uh, in a lot of countries. I like languages and I would like to learn a new language. Uh, I haven't started it yet and I'm thinking about Spanish, Italian or, or uh, Croatian and Montenegro and uh, the area, uh, Serbia and Macedonia. So uh, a language where I could talk to all these folks uh, because I know many of them and I think they are cool people. Other than that, uh, I'm a member of uh, Menza Hungarica, which is a high IQ society. I like card games and board games, and it's a very long list, so I think uh, I have too many hobbies, and uh, I can fill it up with the one hour. But instead of my hobbies, let me talk about uh, Azure DevOps. And uh, the agenda is that uh, I will 
give an overview of uh, Azure DevOps basics, and uh, I will create or show how to create a build virtual machine and the build pipeline. Uh, how to do the automatic start and stop of this uh, virtual machine. And uh, how to do a release, an automated release, and uh, how to set up the hosted agent. So that's the build without a virtual machine. So Azure DevOps overview. Even before uh, Azure DevOps, we had TFS, which was for mainly for developers or OK, it's not real, but uh, in when it started, it was it was about uh, versioning your code and uh, having uh, a backup of your code. So the developers, when they ch made the, uh, changes in the code or new classes, forms and so on, they put their code in, in a repository where you had uh, a history of uh, who did and what changes uh, back in time. And uh, if there was any issues, you could uh, go back to an earlier version. And uh, that was the starting of this uh, whole topic. But now it's, uh, it is about much more. Now uh, Azure DevOps <coughs> is uh, not just uh, a code repository, but it's also a project tool. It's a test tool. It's a CI/CD. That's continuous integration, continuous delivery. So uh, when developers are checking in code, it's automatically built, and then it can be automatically uh, put in a in a in LCS, and from there it can be automatically deployed to your sandbox environment. And uh, so on. So it's a uh, it's a um, much more complex tool now than it was. It gives you much more functionality. And let me start with a demo. And I have this uh, very important reminder for me. Okay. So uh, this is the home page of uh, Azure DevOps for us at JJ Food Service. And uh, this is our project that we are working on. <clears throat> and as my re reminder said, first I will just uh, start my build pipeline and then start to talk about it. So that's it. It is running now. So if you if you see on the left side uh, menu, you can see Azure Boards, which is, uh, as I mentioned, this one is for the project management side of it. You can see a nice visual representation of your tasks their status. You can move the, the task from, from one status to the other with drag and drop. And uh, the project manager and uh, the, the team also can see who is uh, holding what kind of tasks and what is delivered already, what is uh, uh, in progress and what hasn't been started. So this part is about the tasks and the complex completion of the project. Then we have the repos. This is about the code repository. So here we have our AX2012 code, code base. And uh, if you go here, you will see the AX uh, structure, like you can see enums and in the AOT structure, you can find your code in XML format because that's the format how AX uh, stores and uses it. So this is the repository and here you can see the history, when and what was checked in and so on. You have a 
you have a UI using Visual Studio also, and you have uh, it with browser. The next thing is the pipelines. So here you can see, this is where I came to start our build. Here you can see uh, we have build pipelines and we have release pipelines. So build is about uh, building our code uh, that the developers checked in and creating the package and putting it in a shared uh, place and release it automatically. That's the release part. Other than that, we have the tests, which uh, the first session today was very uh, good on this. And uh, I will not, my presentation is not about this part, but it's also in Azure DevOps. And uh, you should watch Mohamed's uh, uh, session, which was the first one today. And we have artifacts here. Artifacts are uh, some additional things. So we are, I'm using NuGet packages here for the hosted agent, and I will talk about it. And uh, and that's it. So here you can see if I go back to the pipelines that uh, I I have already started one, which is called, which is for the VM version of our build. But uh, I will go deeper in it later. So we have the repos, we have the board. Repo is for file uh, versioning and code versioning. Board is for project management, pipelines for build and release, testing, and Azure artifacts. I put some screenshots here in my presentation because uh, you don't have to watch the whole video later if you want to find something. But I have already talked about this. But one other thing is the extensions. So you can add some extensions to your Azure DevOps, and you can do that by by going to the marketplace and searching for your add-in. For example, Dynamics 365 add-in. You can add them from here, or, or I will show another uh, way also. So extension for Dynamics uh, 365 Finance and Operations Tools. Almost every uh, Dynamics project use this. If you add it, you will get some new uh, tasks that you can add to your pipelines. Another Extension that I will also show is about starting and stopping a virtual machine. And there is one more that uh, I will not uh, present, but I know that it's used uh, for power uh, automation build. And that's the Power Platform build tools. So, how did I create this build pipeline? The first step, uh, run book, then registry, and this is just a joke. You don't need to do these uh, complex things. We are in a very good situation because when you create a build virtual machine the first time, you get a default uh, build pipeline also from Microsoft. It's a preset and uh, it's uh, just a small set. After just a small set things, it is working. So here is the link that can help you to set it up. 
and I will show it in a demo also. So if I go to LCS, of course our LCS project is, is uh, integrated with Azure DevOps in the project settings. It's also described in that link, so I will not uh, bore you with those uh, settings. But uh, when it's already set up, you, you can go and create a build virtual machine. If you go to cloud hosted environments, and you add a new virtual machine, select which version, select the environment topology, which is in this case dev test, and here you need to select the build and test, and so on. And uh, after going through these steps, you will, you will get a new virtual machine. And uh, that's what you can see here. The version is not 10.0.14, but it's 10.0.16 in, in my case, because it was uh, already upgraded. But this is what what we get, and uh, with this build machine, you get something else, and that's the build pipeline, which is the default one. So you will get something like this. If you click edit, you will see the steps of this default pipeline. So this is something that I didn't have to do. It came automatically. I just had to do some small setups. But uh, I kept this one as it was, and I created a copy of that one. So that if I make any mistakes, I can come back and look at this uh, original version. But uh, how it looks now for me is here. So you can see in the middle part, this is still the original build pipeline and the original steps. One small change that I made is that it's not pointing to the main, but to a release. Normally you don't need to do that. Uh, we are in an upgrade project and we are building from the release uh, folder because the automatic uh, code upgrade creates code here, but it's, uh, you can still, we could still use the main branch. It's just something that I made. And then uh, I disabled a few steps from the original, from the default one. For example, data, data synchronization. Uh, in our build environment, we don't have data. And uh, that's why for us, there is no use to do this database synchronization. Because when we release our code to our sandbox environment, for example, that contains data and uh, we will see the the situation there instead. And we save some time with this. Report deployment, we, we don't care about it yet. And uh, also this build is uh, an automatic build. So I want it to be quick to check if, uh, if any developer checks in any code, then it is automatically kicked. And that's uh, something that I reached by this setting, enable continuous integration. So because of uh, 
ticking this one. It's automatically starting when any developers are checking in any code. And we immediately know if this code was good or there is any errors and then we can fix it if there, there are errors. So because of that uh, and for some other reasons, I disabled some steps. I also disabled the, the test runs for now. And that's it. With this, it, it can already work, but there is something that uh, to, for this to be able to run, you need to go to LCS and start the virtual machine, and only then it can go. But uh, to eliminate this, I also added two more steps. This is the start VM before and the stop VM after the build because you know we need to pay for running VM much more so it's only up when the build is running and after that it stops. Even if there is an error for, for us it, it stops because uh, maybe not immediately uh, we will not check it immediately so uh, even if the, if the build is successful or not the build virtual machine is stopped automatically. So for that, I had to add a new extension. As I've shown, you can do it from the marketplace or another place is if you go and click the plus button, you will find the extensions here. And uh, for this one, I added the Azure Virtual Machine Manager and after that, I could add this uh, start VM step and also the stop VM step. One more thing is that uh, I created a <clears throat> separate group for that because uh, this part will only start when the virtual machine is already running. So first in a separate group, I need to start the virtual machine. And then same for the stop, it's in a separate group. <clears throat> So it is almost standard. It can stay standard. Uh, these are small things that I made. You don't have to do it. I just showed that it, it is possible and it is easy. Uh, so I think that that is about setting up the build. And uh, if you are done with the setup, you can do what I did before. You can go select your field pipeline and click run pipeline. So you can see here is the history uh, when and why it was running. It, it, many times it was automatic and uh, many times it was manual like now. I started and this icon shows that it is still running. So if I go here, I can see the same thing. So here are the three groups. First is the start virtual machine. Second is the agent job. And third is the stop agent virtual machine. So if I go inside the start agent, then you can see those steps that I was showing in the, in the build pipeline. It seems that it's already started and now it's in the second phase or second group, it is now checking out the code from the Azure DevOps repository. So from here to the build virtual machine. So now you expect that if the virtual machine has started, then you will see it running here. But uh, I think many of you already realized that uh, it, if you don't do it from LCS, but you do the stop and start from Azure, then uh, it's not reflected here. But if I go here, see it was not running, but now it is now it is running. So in in Azure, I can see in Azure portal that it's already running. 
So we will come back here later and uh, see how it goes. But uh, at the moment, this is the step that's running the prepare for build. And this will be a longer one, the build, the solution step, which will be actually the Visual Studio build step for the whole code that we cre created for JJ Food Service. Yes, so the automatic start and stop of the VM. I have shown this, but uh, as I said, I'm putting some screenshots to the presentation also so that uh, you don't need to search in the video, but you can find it faster in the PowerPoint slides and I will share it later. And don't forget to check the status I did it already and this demo I did already about starting and stopping the VM. So now let's talk about the release, which is about automatic upload to LCS for us. Uh, and it can be also the automatic release to, uh, to the sandbox environment, uh, which we don't do, but uh, it is possible. Uh, we don't do it because uh, I will show that uh, after it is uploaded, it's a one click uh, step to deploy it to an environment. And uh, this way we, we only deploy the code when, when we really want, but there are, there are good reasons to automatically immediately release the code or it can be timed that only once a day at the middle of the night. But for us, we only upload the package that's created by the build. So the result of the build, when it is successful, is a deployable package. And uh, with this automatic release, it's uh, immediately going, uh, it's being uploaded to LCS, so we can release it when we decide. So as I've already said, every FinOps project installs Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations tools. It's, it was created by Microsoft, and this is used for uh, LCS upload and also for uh, asset deployment from LCS. So this is how it looks if you go to the release pipelines You can see the asset deployment and asset upload steps. And let's see the demo. So the release pipeline is also in DevOps under pipelines release. And here you can see the steps if I click on the edit. So these are the settings. This is where you can do some schedules and other things, but these are the steps. Yes, so it is much more simple than the build pipeline. You can see it has only two steps. Uh, here, the first step is some renaming of the deployable package. And the other step is the Microsoft tool uh, that I 
is uh, the extension that Microsoft created for Pinops. And uh, here is uh, the, the upload of the package. But let's see what package am I talking about. So if I go back to the build pipelines, this one is still running, but I can go and check one which was already finished and successful. So here you can see this one was run, this one executed in Friday and it was successful. If I go here, I can see three published elements. And here you will see the file that is the deployable package. So you can deploy this code through LCS or this deployable package to your environment. If you download it, then you go to, for example, Sandbox. So here, in our implementation project, we have a sandbox environment. And if I go to full details, I can maintain this environment. And one thing that I can do from maintenance is to deploy the package. To be able to deploy it, First, I need to upload it. So maintain and apply updates. When you click apply updates, you will get the list of deployable packages from your LCS asset in this uh, particular project. It is still loading the data, but soon it will show. And how they come here, that I will show in a separate window, so both can load at the same time parallelly. So here I'm still in my project. And every project has an asset library. In this asset library, you can find many useful things. And this is where you will find the software deployable packages also. And here, if you click import or plus, you can add new files and uh, upload. So the plus means uh, add the file. And uh, here I can select the deployable package that I downloaded from here. Or import means that uh, you import an already uploaded uh, asset from another project or from the main asset library, which is if you go to the root of your lifecycle services, there is always a shared asset library. So that's the difference between the plus and the import. With plus, you can upload manually, but as I said, we already have a release pipeline, which is doing this thing for us. So So this is what makes this step for us. And then, the release step which I was talking about, there I will find autom the automatically uploaded packages. Okay, so how is our build now? It is still running. 
and at which step. So still the start agent group finished and the second group is in progress. And it is so the build solution step is already finished and it was successful. That's a good news. So we are getting closer to have a new deployable package. Okay, hosted agent build. Hosted build agent, sorry. So this means the build without a virtual machine. Uh, how is it possible? Is uh, uh, needs uh, some more steps, and uh, I would like to start here with the demo and then uh, do the the explanation or the slides. So to set this up, I was uh, there are some sources. Well, one is the Microsoft Docs site, obviously. And the other one is Ariste. The, uh, if you don't know his site yet, then you should. It's, uh, it contains uh, many useful things about Azure DevOps. And uh, as I know, he's the next presenter. So uh, he will give you more details and more complex things in the next presentation. And uh, the hosted agent setup is also available on his site as well. I was follow following this uh, description. And uh, there are some easy steps, which uh, when you do sometimes uh, get some, uh, get a little bit more complex, but but it is for me. It was good to follow this de description. So you need to upload three NuGet packages from LCS, and that you can find here. Shared asset library. So you, I, I was not uh, inside any of my projects. I was in the root of uh, LCS and click the, the shared asset library. And here I'm expecting to see the NuGet packages that are needed for the hosted agent. Why we do the hosted agent? Uh, one thing is that uh, it, uh, we don't need the virtual machine for that, and running a virtual machine costs money. But uh, at the moment there are a few steps that uh, hosted agent cannot do, and that's the database synchronization and the, the automated test. But in our case uh, at JJ, we are not uh, needing them, so uh, we can do this. Uh, hosted agent build. So this is the shared asset library, and the NuGet packages are under this link, and you will see that there are always three files that you can use for each version, compiler tool, platform build references, and application build references. For the different versions, you will find them here. The latest is for the 10.0.16. So you need to download these and then you can you can use them. Then the other thing you need to download is the NuGet exe from from NuGet.org, and uh, you need a user who has all the rights, obviously. And uh, he's also saying you need some patience uh, and. Uh, I could follow the steps here, except I had an issue later here. So this is 
it's describing how to download the, the NuGet. There is a PowerShell script that you can execute. Uh, it looks this way. But I don't think we should go inside what it does and how. It's described well. And uh, all these steps worked. But when I reached the, the point of uploading the NuGet packages, I received a few different errors, and that's what I would like to share. So here I, I said uh, there is the Docs Microsoft link, which can help you how to do this uh, hosted agent. And here is Arista's uh, site. I will share it. This is the step that I'm talking about. And here, when I tried to upload, I got different errors. One was unable to upload the service in index for source. And uh, it was saying unauthorized, but I had all the rights, so it was not the real reason. Then, do not contain the expected root configuration. Phi doesn't exist. So for me, that one didn't work. Another error that I received was because of the timeout. So first of all, when I got these errors, I went and instead of this way, I created separate commands. Uh, I have a folder on the C drive for this hosted agent. This is where I downloaded the NuGet packages. And uh, this is the NuGet config, which is described here, how to write it. And uh, I've saved my commands. So instead of that step, I uploaded the files one by one. So Arista is uploading them all together. Uh, it might work for everyone else, but in case you also get uh, this issue, try to do it one by one. And this is the way. I think the last one was the one, or maybe the middle, I'm not sure. One of these are too big, and they can, the standard timeout is, I think, 300. But when I... Uh, add this additional parameter timeout 600, then it will work. So it's using the NuGet exe, which is also downloaded here. And uh, in just a common prompt, I could do this upload. So this is how the timeout error looks. And this is what I did. The increase of the timeout to 600 with a parameter. This is my folder, the NuGet packages, the config files, and the NuGet exe, everything in one folder. Arista is describing uh, more different ways how to do it. This is the way I did it. Uh, and you can see there is a build folder here. I will explain that. So if I go to Visual Studio, here I can show it. So first of all, I created a separate folder in DevOps. So this is where I, we have the repository. It's the same as this one. Repository here. So it's the same thing. Mine is, or ours is here. For most people, it will be in trunk main. Uh, and this is the additional folder that I added. So the same thing from here. This is the build and this is our uh, metadata. But for most people, it will be trunk main. 
the location. So here, uh, I was talking about the, the upgrade project that we are doing and uh, you need to understand one thing for that, uh, uh, from that to understand this one. So what I want to say is that uh, we have uh, three models. We created uh, four models to our upgrade project, our code upgrade. We cut the code to uh, these four models. And one is the JET core, where we have some system modifications like batch framework and, and this core uh, concepts that we modified. The other thing, other model is the JET integration. We, put, we create every code that is related to integration to this model. We have JET reporting, that's for the reporting stuff. And we have the JET operation, that's uh, the biggest uh, model for us. Uh, everything else that doesn't belong to core integration or reporting goes to JET operation model in AX. So uh, because of that, I created a project here, uh, sorry, a solution. And in this solution, I created four empty projects. The first one is linked to a JET core model. Second one is linked to JET integration. The next one is JET for, to JET operation. And the last one is to JET reporting. And I created this empty projects in, in this solution and added it here. So this is the additional folder here. I have the files for my project checked in. These are the uh, solution and these are the four, four projects. And also two more files I need had to add the NuGet config and the packages config. So if I do this, now it is part of the build and I can use it when the hosted agent build is running. So these are the same things that I have here, the NuGet config, the package config, and the build folder. Yes. So after this, I could I could go to Azure DevOps and here uh, I would like to show one thing before that, that uh, with this command that I have shown, this ones, I uploaded the files to the artifacts section and uh, for that, I had to create a new feed and then run the commands that I was talking about. So the result of that is that I can see my NuGet packages here. And when I go to the pipeline, now everything is set for the hosted agent build. If I go to the hosted agent build, you can see I ran it today. It took only 11 minutes. And if I edit the pipeline, there were just some small things to, that I had to set. One was the agent specification that's here, Visual Studio. 2017. Then I linked the, the the Azure DevOps repository, and here I want to show this. I didn't need in the virtual machine build, but with the the Azure hosted agent build, I also mapped this folder in the repository, which contains my uh, empty projects in that solution for the four different models.
So here I also didn't need to worry about these. This was also set up. And if you follow the steps in the blog, then it is there is no other difficult part of it. Okay. So I only disabled this one here and everything else is standard. Uh, th these are the basic setups that I wanted to show. And if I go back to the pipeline, I have seen that this one has finished, which I, we started at the very beginning of this presentation. It took 43 minutes which is much longer than the virtual, the hosted agent build. And the result was, one thing is I have these files, the deployable package. The other result is that now we will have one more artifact or uh, one more asset in the asset library. Maybe if I refresh here, it will come. But in case not, let me open our project. And in the project asset library, you will find this new one, and I didn't have to do it manually. Software deployable packages, and here you can see this one was created just now, 31st of January, and if I go inside, you can see the timing also, I think. Yes, so 11.41, my time. So it was 10 minutes before, and the components are here. So I didn't have to do it manually, but uh, you also don't need to do this one step manually, but for us on purpose we do it. And uh, this is from the sandbox environment. I go to apply updates. And in here, now I should see this new asset loaded after some time. Still loading. Yes, so here is the one. This is what we just created now with this uh, almost default build pipeline. Uh, with the small changes, which you don't have to do, but uh, I just showed that uh, with small effort, you can make it even better, but the default one would also work. Okay. Ah, yes, one important thing, it's good that I made a screenshot. One important thing is that uh, if you go to the hosted agent, uh, there is one step that's called build solution. And here in the standard build pipeline, you will see star.solution, which would cause, or maybe star, yeah, I think star.solutions, which would cause uh, every solution in your 
repository to be built. But uh, we don't want that. Be, we only want this empty solution to be built. So that's why I change it and point to, to that folder which I created. You can see the build and jet build 365. That's exactly what is here. So this solution under our project build and that's the same you can see here. This way you your build will be much faster because you build only the solution which has no code. Uh, I mean you need you will all the models will be built, but uh, only based on this one. Okay. So I think that's all that I wanted to say. I was talking about uh, Azure DevOps, the basics uh, and the basic setup. You, there are very good links. Uh, I think after seeing uh, my presentation, it's easier to follow those uh, uh, descriptions. If you have any issues or questions, you can contact me on info at docsvisionerp.com or LinkedIn. But uh, in general, I, I was talking about Azure DevOps overview, that Azure DevOps is now a more complex thing, not only your code repository history in the cloud, but much more. Uh, I was talking about uh, how to create a build virtual machine and a build uh, pipeline and actually you don't have to do anything almost because Microsoft gives you when you create the build VM you get the build pipeline the default one which is already working. If you want you can add some more things like automatically start and stop the virtual machine. There is also a good description about how to create an automatic release to LCS or, or uh, your sandbox environment. I was showing how the release part works and uh, what's the effect in LCS. Uh, and I also showed how the hosted agent uh, is set up and how it works. You could see that it took only 11 minutes to run this one and took uh, 40 minutes to run the virtual machine one. Of course, uh, you can use a more powerful virtual machine than it is faster. Uh, so I don't say that it has to be 40 minutes. It can be much faster, but uh, yes, this is what I wanted to show. And uh, I'm open for questions for this short time. If you don't have the opportunity to ask the question, then you can shoot it to this email or you can find me on LinkedIn also. Thank you for that, Peter. There are, there are only two questions. Um, so the first question, is by Hitesh, who has asked, hello Peter, maybe I missed something, but where is the pipeline config uh, to specify the build VM environment used to run the build? Yes. So, uh, in this folder which I was showing, there are these two configs only, and these are the same ones that I added here in the build uh, folder. And one is the NuGet config. Mm, maybe it's slow this way. So one is the NuGet config, which only points to our Azure DevOps. Uh, so it's, it's just a JSON link to the, the Azure DevOps uh, folder. And then here is the, the other config that you, I needed to create. And this is about the version of the files, the NuGet packages, and those you can see when you go to 
so many places. For example, in the artifacts, you will find these versions. So only these two configuration files were needed. And the final question is by Emre, who asks, we have four different models and packages. It's related to the different uh, four DevOps branches. Can we use four build pipelines and one build agent? What is, you, what is your suggestion in this regard? So I would use a different agent for them and uh, no, wait, uh, you can use the same one and uh, four different pipelines, yes. And uh, because when you run this build, it will always clean up and, and create again the settings and download the particular code. So one build VM uh, for the four different packages should work. Uh, you know, I'm not in this situation, so I haven't tested it, but uh, maybe Arista in the next uh, presentation will know it better, but I believe because uh, the build virtual machine is always cleaned up and then it is downloading the new code again. Uh, one build virtual machine could be used for the different branches, I believe. 